Hi, I'm Brian. Uh, I've had a bunch of questions on how to do a tune-up on a coilover ignition system. Uh, to do a tune-up, the main things that you want to address are your PCV valve, your spark plug. I should say it in order. The main thing is your spark plugs followed by your wires and any other miscellaneous service things like your air filter or your PCV valve. Um, we're just going to be doing spark plugs on this one. This is a 2004 uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. And, uh, it has coilover ignition that is shared with another plug. Uh, your spark plugs are located in each of these. Um, so what you'll need to do is you'll want to pull off the ignition coil. I like to do an extension because then I can just spin it like that. And then I've got a magnet dish to catch stuff. But uh, you just want to pull the coils off. And as you do so, you want to twist them back and forth. The plastic kind of gets stuck on there. Because I'm doing this one first, I'll unplug this, you just push a buckle, push it in, and then pull it back. And then when you go to do uh, the wires for it, you want to twist them back and forth. What I like to use, you got to be careful because you don't want to cut this part of the wire, but grab it gently and twist back and forth like that. And then start to pull after you've got a good twist on it. And then that'll come up. Your ignition coil over should come up pretty easy without having to twist. And then uh, I've got a little bracket for that wire on the back side. So you pull these up and you can see how that works. Every time this one fires, this one fires. So uh, when this one fires for its top dead center stroke, it's going to ignite the air fuel mixture. And this one will fire at the same time, but it'll be a, a dead stroke, an exhaust stroke. You only fire once for every time the piston or two times that the piston comes up. So I was telling the, the videographer, the uh, mechanic's pretty tired. <laughs> His daughter woke him up a bunch of times last night. So, so you want to get a 5 8 inch uh, socket, spark plug socket. It'll have a little rubber thing in the end of it to hold the spark plug by. And get down on there, get a little feel for it, and then crack it. And if it's incredibly stuck, get along the ratchet. You want to use anises on your spark plugs. I'll show you what that is in a minute. But what I do is I straighten my shoulders out like this, and that way I just kind of lean it. And that way I can really control the force and kind of get a feel, but also go as high in the force categories I need to. So I'll crack that one, crack this other one, and then spin them. You hear that break? That's a mechanical weld caused by electrolysis. When you have dissimilar metals, it causes them to really bind together. It's kind of a white colored corrosion. So if you spin your ratchet, watch out for your sensors and stuff, because if you have some old plastic stuff under hood, sometimes it can break. So be gentle. You do that and it pulls the plug up. And NGK is a good one. A lot of the manufacturers use that. You want to use a platinum plug when you're doing the ignition coilover types. It helps your car to be able to determine if you have a genuine misfire or not. Um, Hermitex anti-seize is what I use. And I just put a little glob on the plug just right there on the end. And then when I put the plug in, it'll go all the way down and all the way around. When the next mechanic goes to pull the plugs out of this, it's going to go crack, but it's not going to take anywhere near as much force. When you tighten the spark plugs down in there, you'll notice on the plugs that they've got a little... Some have a crushed sleeve, some don't. And as far as tightening them down, if you can grab it with one finger and pull it like that, or with your pinky, about as tight as you can get it with your pinky is usually appropriate as a rule of thumb. As you look at one of these plugs, uh, you can see it's got a little bit of a, a crush washer on it. And so you'll want to crush that down a little bit so you have good tight compression. But you don't want to over tighten or you can strip the plugs and create some problems for yourself. So I'm going to do one more plug and then we're going to button up this side. And that will be the video of it. Uh, Matt was, er, <laughs> the videographer was asking me another tool that's good to have. It's a magnet pickup tool, like my socket didn't pick that one up, so I go to stick the tool down there and pick it out that way. So, I'm going to say Matt, but <laughs> the videographer, I can't decide what to call him, Matt. 
Matt was asking me, you know, what if it won't come out? What if you go to do it and it feels like you're dragging metal or stripping or doing something like that? If that's the case, then you want to use a penetrating oil. I recommend PB Blaster. It works really well. You get it to move just a little bit, drag a little bit, and then squirt some down the hole and then let it sit for a little bit. Sometimes a warm engine is easier to get stuck plugs out of than a cold one. So you might want to have the vehicle nice and warm when you go to attempt it. So those are nice and tight. Um, another thing that's good to put on these things is a little bit of dielectric silicone. I probably could have had some on hand, but I've got a little pouch of it, but what I like to do is I'll take it and then just do a little bridge across the plug wire. And what that does is, is it causes the very tip of the plug to not seize onto the bracket in there so it doesn't rip the bracket out. But it also lubricates around the porcelain portion of the spark plug. What I'm talking about is the metal part can get seized into where the little clip is, but also the porcelain can get stuck to the rubber. So if you do that and give it a little twist, it covers around both of them to where you're in good shape. So now i got to do it again, <laughs> but at least you can see what I'm talking about. Those are the two ways. And you know, if you get the boot part stuck on the plug, sometimes these will pull off of here and stick on the plug and then you can't get your socket on it stuck down in there and you have to fish it out. So when I do these things, most of my customers are customers for the long haul. <laughs> I usually see them 10 years down the line. So all of my work that I do, I like to do it such, so you get them to where they'll click. I like to do it such that it'll make it easy for me down the road. Plus it's just good practice and it's good karma. So we'll tighten these down and we'll plug it in and we'll be good to go. Something to watch for if you've got bad plug wires or something, you'll see a lot of white buildup. These don't have a lot of it, so I can't really show you what it looks like. But anywhere they make contact with something else, you'll see uh, white tracking. You know, is it arcs or is it escapes? And instead of going to the plug, if it gets out and grounds out directly, as a byproduct of atmospheric you know, stuff in the air, leaves a white deposit on the wire. And that's a good indication that you need to replace your wires. You can also turn out all the lights and have the car just idle. Make sure you got ventilation. You don't want to kill yourself in your garage with carbon monoxide, but um, you'll see an arc, or you'll see the wire actually glow. It'll glow kind of like uh, like these fluorescent lights. If you rub them on your hair in the dark, they'll actually glow. You know, it's kind of the same thing. So, hope this video was helpful to you. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the gray subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And... Uh, Add it to your favorites, they'll make it easier to find when you get to your buddy's house. <laughs> so anyway, love you, good luck.